Hey gang, thank you for joining me again this week. We're going to continue to look at the character of God. And why are we doing that? Because we want to adopt or we want to have the same character that God has so that we, our motives will be pure, our heart will be uh, pure, and we'll have a clear conscience before God because we, our motives won't be selfish and self-indulging but will be to glorify God. So I'm going to start this week with reading a passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 17, starting with verse 14. Matthew chapter 17, starting with verse 14. It says, And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and a child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? And Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. Um, for surely I say to you, If you have faith as a mustard seed, You will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, And it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Well, you know, it sounds like Jesus was kind of getting on their case because of a, a lack of faith, right? So did Jesus rail against his disciples when he was correcting them? Did he, did he um, belittle them or anything like that? Well, no, he didn't. You know, was his point to make them feel useless and inept and unskilled? No, it, that wasn't his point. You know, I don't know about you, but I've worked with some people. They're hard to work because they work with because all they did was criticize and criticize and criticize, and pretty soon you just go, "Well, you either quit or you let it go in one ear and out the other ear." But Jesus was training them right the fact is that he was trying to point out an attitude most of us that's right today struggle with when we get a little knowledge or ability you know what that is <laughs> somebody said it's the basis for sin it's pride that's right it's pride why they were jewish too they had the same religious um background of most of those religious leaders is just that a rabbi picked them and they did further studies than most of them. You know, uh, he kept pointing out how small their faith was. Uh, like in verse 20, he says, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long will I bear with you? You know, the word faithless means little faith. That, not that they didn't have any faith. Because uh, it meant they had a little faith because their confidence was low. They didn't have confidence or they had a lack of confidence. The Greek word is apistos, where a, a, means no, right? And pistos means uh, faith or uh, it means faith, or in this case, no faith, or a lack of enough faith. And where we get our this word, um, apistos, is like, uh, or a apistos, is like atheos, or atheist. No God. So someone who is an atheist says there's no God. So what Jesus was saying is that their faith needed to increase. And the, the word perverse means 
unreasonable because they had already seen Jesus and his example on how he trusted God. So they needed to trust God also, just like us, right? So that brings me, uh, that brings up the question, where does faith come from? And how can we increase our little or small faith? Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 gives us the answer. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let me read that again. So then faith comes or increases by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need the Holy Spirit to continue to help us to hear what the word of God is saying. And he, you cannot hear the word of God if you are not in the word of God. Well, if we look at the character of God um, and why Jesus wasn't berailing them or trying to belittle them, uh, we will see his example all through, all through the New Testament. And our example um, in, the, in the Old Testament is of the interaction of people like Moses and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Gideon, all their interaction with God. And it reveals um, the true motive of God, which was that he wanted them to increase in their trust in him. Nowhere does God display motives that are demeaning, insulting, or belittling. belittling. In fact, the only ones who encountered Jesus' displeasure was those who claimed to be speaking for God. And they were terrible at liars by their example. So here's another passage in the New Testament that will give us um, an idea of what Jesus was talking about. Now, you're going to hear plenty or many woes. Woes means whoa, warning, right? So in Matthew chapter 23, starting with verse 13. Matthew chapter 23, starting with verse 13. It says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those who are trying to. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You hypocrites, you travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. <laughs> wow. Kind of heavy, huh? Verse 16. Woe to you, blind guides. You say, if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing. But anyone who swears by the gold of the temple is bound by that oath. You blind fools, which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? You also say, if anyone swears by the altar, it means nothing. But anyone who swears by the gift on the altar is bound by that oath. You blind men, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? Therefore, anyone who swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. And anyone who swears by the temple swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. They're referring to God, right? And anyone who swears by heaven swears by God's throne and by the one who sits on it. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spice. Yeah, your spices, mint, dill, and cumin. But you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter, the latter, which is justice, mercy, and faithfulness, without neglecting the former. 
you blind guides. You strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs. Uh, one, I think the King James says sepulchers, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part in them shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead then and complete what your ancestors have started. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Therefore, I am sending you prophets and sages and teachers. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town. And so upon you will come all the righteous um, will come all the righteous blood that has been shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel, from the book of Genesis, right? To the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Truly, I tell you, all this will come on this generation. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> I put it, wow. Wow, I think Jesus was a little bit ticked off with them, a little bit angry with them. And yet, they did not listen by correcting the things he pointed out. Are we listening, but not correcting, not doing what God says? And yet, listen to how Jesus ends this whole scene of scolding. It, that's what it was. It was correcting, right? Look how he ends, verse 37. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather you or gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You know, even with a broken heart over the things they did not do, Jesus still was seeking them with the possibility of them being saved. Are we, the church, grieving the heart of God with our arrogance and self-seeking like these religious leaders? So, let's go back to the first passage. You know, do you think that God is criticizing them? And Jesus is criticizing them, trying to put them down? No. Because even in talking to these religious leaders, he was pointing out what was going on, but they weren't listening. You know, and sometimes we get to a point where we go, we wouldn't have done that. Well, that's what the religious leaders said. You know, if we were alive when those prophets were alive, we wouldn't have done what our fathers did. And yet, Jesus tells them they are going to do that. That's why I opened up with Jesus was trying to point out an attitude that sometimes we get when we follow God. We get this, the Hawaiians call, hai maka maka, or nose up in the air, 
or prideful look and we look down at others. You know, you could be a short person and still look down at other people. It's not about the height. It's about the attitude. You know, do we criticize the religious leaders while we are doing the same things they were? Jesus points out what they were lacking. He said, the most important matters of the law were justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Did we not learn that God corrects, right? God corrects or disciplines those he loves. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 12. You know, I find myself longing for others to experience the love, compassion, and heart of God that I am blessed to have that kind of relationship with God. We're in our prayer meeting, and, and I, I prayed that. When it came out of my mouth, I said, wow, that is, God, I, I feel sorry for people who don't have this relationship with you. Please, Lord, help us to help them come to this relationship with you. Wow. Because what were they looking for? After a while, you know, it takes time to seek God. It takes, you know, we have to make a point to seek God. But finding the favor of people is way easier, right? Way easier for them to look at us and, and, and we look all that good. That's what Jesus was talking about. You know, you clean, you clean the outside, but you forgot what was inside. And there's a pastor that once said, you know, it's all about the heart anyway, right? And Jesus said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. So what are you spending time on? What are you investing your money in? What are you doing? What are you listening to? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing from the Word of God. You know, it's not fair for us to enjoy our relationship with God while others are wandering like these Pharisees and blind guides and religious leaders he was talking to. He, they're wandering without faith, hope, and love. And we need to exercise faith, hope, and love, like Jesus was talking about, the greater things of the law. So let's keep hearing the word of God because that is where our faith increases and God is able to continue to use us to be his hands, be his feet, be his eyes, his ears, you know, and his voice to share that faith, hope, and love with others. Let's pray. Father, our heart's desire, like the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 10 and verse 1, is that he says that Israel might be saved. We say that the people around us might be saved. Lord, our families, our loved ones, our uh, relationships with others, our friends, our co-workers. Lord, those that we serve in our community through maybe food pantries or, or mowing their yard or taking their trash to the, to the dump or whatever it is. Lord, help us to exhibit what Jesus did. Your compassion and your heart for them. Lord, because that's the only thing that fulfills them. Because when we received your son Jesus, Lord, we were full of what we were seeking for. And you are continuing to help fill us with faith that pleases you. So help us, Lord, I pray, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. All right. Hi, Mom.
and Brother Keone. Hey, mahalo for watching. Aloha.